For a disciple of Jesus Christ, academic scholarship is a form of worship. Elder Neil A. Maxwell. President Hinckley gave me the charge to help BYU be the best it could be. And it was with that understanding that uh, he and the brethren approved the naming of the Maxwell Institute, both to honor Neil Maxwell for the tremendous contributions he had made to not only the church and to BYU, but also to highlight the uh, uh, intent that we would be broadening and that we would be uh, uh, seeking academic excellence as we think about Neil Maxwell and his, his role as our progenitor there. As the church has continued to progress and grow in terms of number and numbers and influence, there's a growing segment of those in between who really aren't necessarily out to attack us. They're not necessarily out to defend us. They just want to understand us. And that presents a wonderful opportunity and I think an area in which we can provide not only help to them, but to also members of the church who themselves have questions as they sort of encounter things that don't necessarily fit into this black and white world. That's one of the primary functions of the Maxwell Institute that it's not only positioned to do, but charged with doing. This link may not be obvious to everyone that research sort of in esoteric sources has any bearing on our faith, you know, our, our devotion, our commitment to the gospel. But the scriptures seem to point in the other direction, that there actually is a link. One of my favorites, and one of Joseph's favorites, because he quoted it a number of times, uh, is one in this 88th section where it says, as all have not faith, seek ye diligently, and teach one another words of wisdom. Yea, seek ye out of the best books words of wisdom. Seek learning even by study and also by faith. That's an interesting scripture because it assumes that there will be people in the church who do not have faith, who are struggling with their faith, and that the remedy for their ailments is to study, to seek out of the best books, and to teach one another. And it seems to me that's the spirit of the, the Maxwell Institute. Joseph Smith taught us that truth is truth, no matter where it comes from, no matter where it's found, and that the gospel of Jesus Christ is prepared to embrace all truth, no matter where it comes from. Joseph Smith was fearless in his quest for truth. We should cultivate that same courage of being willing to embrace truth wherever we find it, beauty wherever we find it, even if it's something very different than what we're used to and what we were brought up with. I'm struck by the language of the closing chapter of the Book of Mormon, that to come unto Christ is to love God with all our mind. Latter-day Saint scholars care about language like that, and we think about it. What would that mean? What does that look like to love God with all our mind? And certainly it, it, it demands our best effort, our, our highest priority, our, our best work. It's never a question of either or. Do we go with reason or do we go with faith? With Joseph Smith, it was always we find a way to reconcile both. Uh, my favorite photograph in all of church history is the photograph of Orson Pratt's observatory, which he builds right up. It abuts the, the, the rising Salt Lake Temple. And so you've got the temple in the background, in the foreground, you have this adobe mud hut with a telescope. It's the temple and the observatory. It's, it's, uh, we can find a way to combine both of these uh, approaches to learning and, uh, and, and build a kingdom in that, along that model. And I think the Maxwell Institute represents an opportunity not to escape those tensions, not to hide our head uh, in the face of that paradox and to embrace that sometimes it's the very tensions, very counterpoints that have this expanding force um, that as we are encountering um, the tensions between our scholarly discoveries and our faith commitments, uh, that actually through that process we are enlarged. Our Savior was uh, the ultimate exemplar of that um, in that he personally took upon himself the weight of justice and mercy, the ultimate paradox, the ultimate tension. And it cost him everything to do that on our behalf. But in our small, broken, imperfect ways, I think we have the opportunity to follow that example in a willingness to shoulder 
the paradoxes of faith and scholarship. Um, and that sometimes comes at a high price for us as well. But it's a price that in the spirit of our Savior's ultimate sacrifice, I think we need to be willing to make um, to, to shoulder whatever burdens and difficulties come along uh, with the effort to hold on to both faith and learning.